I'm taking on a brand new challenge, going to be beating every Nintendo 64 game ever released. No guides, no help, all done on the original hardware, just like it was intended back in the day. The twist is, the next game is randomly generated, so I have no idea what's coming next. In the last video we drove around a bit, and in this video we're going to be blowing stuff up. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video of me beating every Nintendo 64 game. If you do enjoy these videos, leave it a like, it does help me out a lot. I really appreciate it, and if you want to see more of these, subscribe so that you make sure you see it in your sub feed. Game number four, Battle Tanks, developed by 3DO, released in 1998. This is another game I'd absolutely never heard of before, but many of my viewers said they really enjoyed it. Most, however, said they enjoyed it for the multiplayer, which is not really what this series is about. We're only looking into the single player aspect of all these games, and the first thing that happened when I turned this game on is it informed me, hey, you don't have a save pack, you can't save. Remember, games back in the day used to need a memory card? Uh, unfortunately, I had ordered one, but it hadn't arrived yet, so I pulled a classic but totally foolproof strat, just left my console on overnight. Upon checking the settings of the game, I noticed the difficulty was set to easy by default, but my Twitch chat peer pressured me to change it into normal, and uh, so I did. But for any title in the future, we will go with the default difficulty setting. I could go harder if I want, but default is you can't go easier, basically. So this game has a dedicated single player campaign, so to beat this game, our goal is simple. Beat the single player campaign. The story to this game is absolutely wild, and uh... It hasn't aged all that well. Fair warning. So this game predicted in 2001 that there would be this deadly virus. God, I'm already... This video's gonna get demonetized. They were only about 19 years off. Uh, anyway. The virus has no vaccine or cure, and it only infects female humans with a 99.9% .9 fatality rate. It's the end of humanity as they know it. Martial law is declared and all females are being evacuated to a quarantine zone in Northern California. The army uses deadly force against anyone who does not agree. Other countries all over the world are following similar plans. Meanwhile in New York, this dude named Griffin just proposed to his girlfriend Madison. He vows to keep her with him no matter what. After a bit, civil war erupts in America, and apparently China and Russia nuke each other, so I guess that's a thing. Don't know why they mentioned that. Madison ditches Griffin to go to the quarantine zone, and uh, he's kinda not cool with that. And so now civilization has ended, anarchy's ensued, all the males who did survive the apocalypse formed gangs where they drive around in... Tanks, if you guessed it. But this story only cares about one gang, the one led by Griffin from New York. He's going to travel all the way from New York to California to rescue Madison, and he's going to blow up a lot of tanks in the process. So yeah, that's the lore of the game, and uh, yeah. Anyway, the gameplay has you driving around the tank, blowing up other tanks. The first mission has Griffin taking down a rival gang in New York City, known as the Urban Decay. First mission's an open area type mission, one of the two types you'll find in this game. I uh, didn't do so hot on my first attempt, and when you fail your mission, the game is not shy letting you know about it. You guys told me to pick normal mode. So during missions you drive around in Griffin's tank, completing whatever objective the game gives. In the first mission you just have to blow up five other tanks. Your tank has a health meter, a basic cannon, and you can also pick up more powerful weapons. There's also a mini map in the corner, and if you pick up a radar power up it shows the locations of key things on the map. After getting used to the controls, I knocked this first mission out pretty quickly. In the next mission, Griffin has to cross over the bridge known as No Man's Land. It's called that because no man has ever crossed it alive. Oh god. This mission is the second type of mission, where it's more like a long, thin area where your only goal is to reach the other side rather than achieve some objective. This level teaches you more about how the game works putting power-ups behind breakable barriers. Basically, in this game you can destroy most things and you can sometimes find helpful power-ups by blowing things up. We'll be doing that a lot in this game. I also got my first taste of the more powerful weapons in this level with the Swarmers. These stronger weapons will be critical in future levels, trust me. Uh, this level was pretty easy and I knocked it out first try. 
Mission number three, Griffin finds himself in Times Square, the headquarters of the Urban Decay. The goal here is simple, destroy 15 tanks. After getting used to the controls, the game got pretty fun. I was surprised after the awful story they presented at the start. However, this mission in particular had one thing that really rubbed me the wrong way. There's clearly a visible McDonald's sign on one of the buildings, and I was not paid for this forced advertisement. Oh my god, it's a McDonald's. Not cool, McDonald's. Anyway, I also discovered in this level something I didn't realize at the time, but it's the key to victory in this whole game, the nuke. Luckily for me, I released the nuke before it was too late, and it didn't blow me up. With the combination of the regular missiles and the swarmers, this mission's fairly easy, and I knocked it out first try. For mission 4, Griffin finally gets out of New York City. Unfortunately for him, his only way out is across the Stranglehold Bridge, which happens to be the base of operations for the Urban Decay. This mission's where the game decides you've had enough time to learn, it really puts your skills to the test. I got absolutely wrecked first entering this level, like, my goodness. This level introduces the concept of extra tanks as well, basically they allow you to respawn if you die and you don't lose your progress, as long as you have some saved up. The mission also introduces bunkers and these things are evil. They allow enemy tanks to continuously spawn out of them as long as you haven't destroyed the bunker. But the most evil thing of all awaits us at the end of this level, the Goliath tank. This thing's massive, it shoots incredibly fast, it moves incredibly fast, and it deals huge damage. It destroyed my hopes and dreams my first attempt on this level, and having a strategy for these is crucial if you want to win the game. Unfortunately for me, I didn't have any kind of strategy for this mission, but it didn't matter as I just drove past the thing, completely ignoring it. Help! Yeah! After the fourth mission, we run into a new type of level, the bonus level. This level, you get to control the Goliath tank, which is kind of awesome, and you just blow up tanks until you're done. Basically, it's a way for you to earn bonus tanks before the next mission. Now we get even more lore introduced, and oh god, we learn about the Queen Lords. Basically, it goes more into how there are tons of tank gangs all over America, others trying to rebuild, some trying to destroy. But the main goal of every tribe is to have a queen lord. Since women are the only way the human race can survive, since the virus killed most of them, uh, they keep the queen lords locked up in a fortress guarded by goliath tanks, and Griffin's now got a small following of ally tanks making his way across the US. But the roads you must travel are guarded by another gang known as the Psycho Brigade. Griffin must defeat them to move on. Yeah, this story's kind of aged like milk you spilled in the back of the car right before you left on vacation and it just smells horrible. Anyway, so the fifth mission introduces a new objective. We have to break through enemy defenses and retrieve their queen lord. This mission starts to show how this game is going to get ridiculous. There's just turrets and other tanks shooting at you from all directions. It gets pretty spammy, especially late in the game. And another thing they like to do in this game is put good power-ups inside a tight space filled with landmines. Basically, you have to like precision maneuver yourself around them if you want them, and it's usually worth it. In the end, all you have to do is touch the Queen Lord and you beat the mission. Queen Lord Rescued. Queen Lord rescued. For the sixth mission, Griffin's made his way to Chicago, the stronghold of the Psycho Brigade, and we now have to protect our own Queen Lord while taking one from them for this mission. Also, somehow Griffin now has a Goliath tank in his gang, they don't really explain that, but heck yeah. And this mission's a lot harder, but I discovered a very broken mechanic to defeat Goliath tanks, the guided missiles. Basically, you shoot one of these and you can control it however you want. So what you want to do is just go hide somewhere safe, shoot the guided missile, launch it directly into their Goliath tank, and you can do it without taking any damage. And with this strat, I beat this easily. Queen Lord Rescue. So in the seventh mission, Griffin's now secured part of Chicago and the Psycho Brigade needs some help. They've joined forces with the Skull Riders Biker Gang to take Griffin down. This is where the game gets kind of frustrating because now there's double the amount of enemies for you to deal with. Also, we have to capture two Queen Lords this time. And this mission introduces what, in my opinion, is the worst thing in this game, the Fortified Bunker. Basically, it's exactly like the previous bunker where enemies will just constantly spawn outside of it, except for one difference, you can't destroy it. 
so no matter what you do, the fortified bunker is spawning enemies the entire time. Like, there's literally nothing you can do. I didn't find any guided missiles in this level, so the only thing I could do to deal with the Goliath tank is just run at it and try to brute force it, and it didn't go so well, so the only way to do this mission is just do it very, very quickly. It took a few tries, but I was able to get it without really any good strategy. Now mission 8, Griffin has made his way to the western part of the US, which is dominated by three different gangs. The Mech Maniacs, the Nuclear Knights, and the Charlie Company. So yeah, you guessed it. Now we're dealing with triple the amount of enemies, and we have to cross Armageddon Highway. This mission, it was hard. There's turrets everywhere, bunkers spawning enemies, tanks everywhere, there's even a bunker that spawns Goliath tanks. What the heck, those things are nuts. Uh, the guided missiles, they're your friend here, you absolutely need them, and uh... It's just, it's hard. I got insanely lucky and I crossed the finish right as a Goliath tank was blowing me up and the game decided I won anyway. Unless... Let's go! So for the ninth mission, Griffin finds himself inside the secret base, Area 51. There's lots of high-tech weaponry here, and multiple Queen Lords. So for this mission, we have to rescue three Queen Lords, and man, this mission is absolutely unfair. I'm not sure, like, since I have it on normal difficulty, I don't know how different easy is, but gosh. This was just ridiculous. There's enemies all over the place, lots of fortified bunkers, and not to mention you have to get three Queen Lords to get through three enemy bases and three Goliath tanks. And I'm not really sure if it does anything, but there's a UFO hidden in one of the buildings and you can blow it up and it like makes some confetti pop out or something, so it's kind of cool. Oh my god, UFOs are real. Hooray! I got really frustrated with this mission and I was really worried about finishing this game. I just died over and over and over again. And in my opinion, there's only one way to beat these later missions, and that is finding the hidden nuke in the level. Basically, if you use the nuke, it'll blow up and destroy literally everything. So the good strat is, immediately go find the nuke as soon as you can, launch it, and it blows up most of the enemies, and then just go clean up. So after learning about the nuke, I beat this mission pretty easily. There wasn't much trouble. Alright, finally. Oh, that was rough, dude. Mission 10, Griffin finds himself in the city of Las Vegas, the headquarters of the three gangs. Once again, against all odds, Griffin must capture three Queen Lords and defeat these gangs once and for all. This one was really tough. It was kind of often I was able to secure two of the Queen Lords, but getting all three at once was just ridiculous. After a while, it just became impossible because the enemies would constantly spawn and go into your base with shields on them from fortified bunkers, remember? And there was no way to do it really, so after struggling a ton, I knew what I had to do. I had to go find the nuke and just blow everything up. It's the only way to win in this game. Though I did find the nuke eventually, it's always in the same spot that you can look, uh, you know. Just a way that's out of the way is where it usually is, or a heavily fortified area. So with the nuke, I just blew all of Las Vegas to smithereens, and getting the Queen Lords was pretty easy after that. Come on! Yes! Yes! <laughs> Finally, Griffin's made it to where he needs to be, the city of San Francisco. The quarantine zones were not targeted by nukes, so the city's still in good shape. It's currently under control of the Dark Angels gang, who formed an alliance with the Aftershocks and the Skull Riders gangs. The only way in is across the Crimson Gate Bridge, renamed due to all the people who died on it trying to get in. The game is just getting ridiculous at this point. There's enemies all over the place and it's so spammy. Like, just at, look at how rapidly my health's going down at the start of the mission. Unfortunately, this is one of those missions where you just have to reach the end, so there's no nuke here. But I did find a new type of power-up in this level, the cloaking device. Basically, you just put it on your tank and no enemies are able to see you. 
even if you're literally destroying all the walls around you, like somehow they don't notice you. Unfortunately, it doesn't last nearly long enough to sneak across and I got annihilated. By far the worst part of this mission is there's a fortified bunker at the very start of the level that keeps sending this tiny little tank that'll hit you no matter how far you are down the bridge. So every time it spawns you have to turn around and blow it up or else you'll lose a bunch of health for nothing. After a lot of brute forcing I found a second cloaking power up and this is exactly what I needed to get to the end. I would just clear a bunch of enemies out, double cloak myself all the way down to San Francisco. I found the perfect hiding spot and I put my stealth plan into action. It was flawless. No one would notice me disappearing directly in front of them or blowing up walls right beside them. But what happened next, I had no way of seeing it coming. Literally, it was directly behind a wall. I was perfectly safe and visible doing my stealth mission and I tore down a wall and there was a pile of landmines directly behind it. Blew me up, ruined everything. I was devastated, but I didn't want to give up. I still had nine bonus tanks to go, you know, maybe I could brute force my way through the rest of the level. But then, a miracle happened. I found a third cloaking power up. This is exactly what I needed and I could get redemption. Yeah, unfortunately there's like 10 trillion mines at the very end and I just blew up again. So just when I'd given up all hope, a new solution hit me right in the face. It turns out, if you drive directly beside a Goliath tank, they just kind of freak out and sit there next to you and they shoot way more slowly. Using this, I was able to take them down without taking any damage sometimes, and if they did hit me, it was usually once. Goliath tank after Goliath tank were stunned at my new strat, and I was able to blow them all up. But one final thing awaited me at the end of the Crimson Gate Bridge, like 20 billion gigantic turrets. Turns out my stealth plan would never have worked because there's no way past these guys without shooting and if you shoot anything while you're cloaked everybody will see you. It took quite a few bonus tanks but after running myself into the turrets over and over I finally reached the end. Mission 11 complete. You made it! Getting across the bridge brings us to mission 12, securing the wharf. Apparently Griffin must secure the place with minimum casualties if he ever wants to rescue Madison. Oh yeah, remember? That's the whole point of this, is to rescue one single person. This map is tiny and there's just mines, bunkers, goliath tanks, anything that hurts you it's here and it's everywhere. It's absolutely ridiculous. Help! Okay, so that's not what we want to do. Look, I want to be real with you here, I don't see any way possible to beat this mission without resorting to drastic measures. There's just far too many things everywhere, like there's nothing you can do. So that's why I decided the best way to secure the wharf with minimum casualties is find the nuke and blow the entire place up. Like what else do you do, right? So after searching for quite a bit I found it hidden on a dock in the back of the map. The plan was simple. Get a cloaking device, sneak by literally everyone, get the nuke and launch it just before they find me. I executed the plan perfectly and blew the entire wharf to kingdom come. I'm sure most of the people were okay, you know, there's not that many casualties. And with literally everything destroyed, it wasn't too bad to get the three queen lords. Mission 12 complete. Finally. Griffin had reached his destination, the quarantine zone, where all the females were kept during the plague years. This is it. The final battle of good versus evil will be fought here. I'm not sure who's good and who's evil here, but uh, yeah, it's what the game says. This mission only has one Queen Lord and we can assume that's Madison. This is one of those long thin maps, except it is different in that it has an objective. You do have to retrieve the Queen Lord. This mission, honestly, it wasn't as bad as the previous one. They give you way more power-ups to work with. However, there still were definitely a ton of enemies to deal with. There was an alcove in the middle of the map filled with tons of power-ups, but also tons of enemies, and securing this place is key to winning this mission. Little did I know, there was a nuke hidden away here. I didn't think there would be since it was a long, thin map, but I will take it. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't really able to get an optimal placement for the nuke, but I still took out a lot of enemies near the back of the level. The fortress containing Madison was heavily, heavily guarded, and I got absolutely destroyed the first time reaching it. Things were looking bleak for breaching the base, but then I caught a lucky break and found some guided missiles nearby. And these made it very easy to break through, they're absolutely broken. And uh, we got Madison, hopefully she's not upset we're taking her out of the safe quarantine place, but uh, yeah. 
So yeah, we beat the final mission, and Griffin is reunited with Madison at last, and the game says his tribe declares him Battle Lord, whatever that means. So now with Griffin in control of the entire US, he can rebuild society. So yeah, there you have it. That's my journey to beating battle tanks. Honestly, the game started out pretty fun, but it got really repetitive and the final levels were really frustrating just with so many enemies. Like it just felt unfair. I'm not sure how different the game is on the easy difficulty. Maybe some of you guys know. And like I mentioned in the beginning, a lot of people said this game really shines in the multiplayer, which like I said, we're not investigating in this series. Uh, we're only concerned with how these games play in single player. Overall, this game is just kind of average. Uh, I'll give it like a 5 out of 10 how much I enjoyed it, and maybe like a 5 out of 10 difficulty. Uh, the difficulty would be way, way higher, but once you figure out just use the nuke, it becomes pretty easy. But um, yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. If you did like the video, consider giving it a like. And if you want to watch more of these videos, subscribe so you make sure you catch the next one. But uh, yeah, here's a little teaser for what game we are playing next. Let's do it. What are we going to get? What are we going to get? 201 way down the list that is tonic trouble <laughs>